What's going on, everyone? It's Bob with Cinefellas, and today I am bringing you my interview with writer-director Allison Locke. Allison wrote a movie called The Apology. It's a nice locked room thriller, and it is now streaming on AMC+. Have a listen and see how we talk about her inspiration, the actors' uh, performances, and of course how Janine Garofalo is on and off screen. So sit back, have a listen. Bob, I'm Allie. I'm just laughing at that you have my poster as your background. You, you think, why wouldn't I? We're promoting this thing, right? <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you. That's very kind. First off, thank you so much for your time. I like the vibe in the back. You got this whole thing going. All right. Yeah, all right. yeah. I'm a big Christmas nerd. I mean, obviously, I made a Christmas film, so I'm like, let's carry it through. <laughs> Absolutely. I watched this and thought immediately, Christmas. That's the only thing that went through my mind. I was like, you know what? <laughs> This Christmas story and Scrooge, like right yeah, there. Yeah, well, you know, that's a little glimpse into the inside of my brain. <laughs> so yeah, I watched it. Uh, thought it was really good. Like I, Thank I you. like a good suspense uh, movie. I was talking with the people who did uh, Bloody Christmas, and we were talking about the Tales from the Crypt, the Tales from the Crypt episode, um, and all through the house. Do you remember that one? It was yeah, the one where there was the yeah. Santa who was this killer. Oh killer. yeah, 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 yeah. So. It started an obsession for horror movies that take place on Christmas for me. So oh. this was th this was fun. Do you ever want to write me for a list? I'll, I can provide. I'm a big fan. Yeah, that's cool. That's great. Well, welcome to the world. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I like it. So I got to ask where the origins were, because this complex of a film with this much emotion and feeling like it pulls from a lot of different things, especially that are prevalent now with all of these cold cases being worked with and all that. Yeah. Where was your inspiration for this? Well, some of that was the inspiration for sure. Um, I've always been uh, interested in true crime stories and felt a lot of empathy for those folks. And, and, uh, and of course we all wonder what would, what would we do in such situations? How would we handle tragedy? How would we handle wanting you know, closure, justice, or whatever word that's impossible to achieve, you know, <laughs> that we would want to do. But then I had a dream about that knock at the front door and a man on the other side saying, I know what happened to your daughter. And so uh, I woke up, wrote that down, and I thought, and I just became fascinated with the idea, who are these people? In the dream, it was a stranger. And then as I continued to write it, it, it became obvious that I needed to, that I really wanted to make it as big in the idea as possible and therefore make it as difficult for my character as possible. And what's worse than somebody that means the world to you coming and telling you that something like this, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Like just, yeah, a lot of that feeling, a lot of the emotion, plus I don't know where this was shot or anything. I love the, the whiteout that you couldn't see. You only saw the outline of a house from across. The, so I thought, like it made it feel like, yeah, this is the day it would happen. Yeah. So, so obviously the casting, you had four roles were casting, but one bravo on getting Janine Garofalo on a screen. Like anytime you can get her onto a screen, I'm locked in. I'm ready for it. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. I was so thrilled. I literally asked my producers, I was like, could we maybe try Janine? <laughs> like, I'm like, nobody's going to, she's not going to say yes. Like they're probably not even going to be able to, you know. And uh, she was so generous that she called me off of my cover letter. Like I put my phone number on there just in case, just in case, you know, and she literally just direct me, directly called me and she is as cool and as smart and as funny and soulful and supportive as you could expect. I mean, she just, I was like, she was having, we were having this one moment where I was having a very hard time on set and she was, she just came out and was like talking to me and I was like, I looked at her for a second and I was like, wait, are we becoming girlfriends? Like we're becoming like genuine friend, like real friend. Cause she's just like that. She just wants to support everybody. She just has so much energy. It's just really, what a treat. You know, and that, and that makes, that, that makes it 10 times better because I've loved her since reality bites was like my first introduction to her. And then of course her stand up comedy. So it's kind of cool to hear about the people who are iconic and then are down to earth and aren't, all about themselves because you don't hear many oh. stories like that she wanted to be around everyone she wanted to constantly you know and she would you know she just always had smart ideas and then she was genuinely shocked when i'd take them it was really sweet <laughs> <laughs> i think you got yourself a best friend maybe now you're gonna start you're gonna have a christmas card list that'll be amazing 
<laughs> oh, I wish. But at the very least, it's nice to have conversations with Janine Garofalo. She is a really uh, a treat of a human being. So when we're going with casting too, um, to me, Anna Gunn killed this. Oh, I'm like glad. she, she, you believed everything she's doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. From the showing uh, the despair of trying to get out of here and, and you know, you were fighting with her and I think she really drew you in, which I don't think a lot of actresses can do depending on the role, but Allison knocked it out of the park. Um, and I mean, Linus was very good as well. He had that, he has the ability to somehow make you hate him and make you feel like he's slimy just with the way you wrote him. But Allison was phenomenal. Now, did you have a lot of insight on those castings or did these people audition or? Oh, no, uh, they, I think they're probably far beyond needing to audition, but we, <laughs> but it was definitely more of a me wooing them situation. Um, but yeah, I wrote them cover letters as well. Um, my producers had a relationship with Linus because they had worked on Mandy together and he gave oh, a tremendous performance. As um, a awesome movie. Oh my God. And he's so good in that. And I said, you know, when I was first meeting with him, I said, you know, I love, I, I've been a fan since Wings of the Dove and Priest, these movies that he made early in his career. But, uh, and I think, and I just thought, oh, it's so interesting to me what you've been fascinated about as an actor feels very similar to things that I'm fascinated with as a writer director. Let's play, you know, <laughs> and we just, we really did hit it off that way in our, in our, I think all of my cast was willing was super down to be as vulnerable about every moment of this as I was, you know, I, that was my guiding principle always was to be honest and vulnerable with every collaborator and especially with my actors, because I think that's where you get your best work, your most honest work, and just the most, you know, human you can be with your, you know, even on a grounded level with your coworkers, <laughs> you know, you want to be <laughs> kind and open to them and especially because it's such tough work. And, you know, um, Anna especially had to go to so many, they both had to go to such dark places, but in completely different ways, you know, because I think um, Jack is harder to relate to for obvious reasons, but uh, because Darlene is so easy to relate to for other, you know, hard, obvious reasons. It was like Anna and I both bonded right away as being mothers and, and um, having these sort of dark imaginations ourselves. And uh, we just talked about that a lot, but she would just, she just kept pushing. Like, I'm especially proud of, uh, of how vulnerable she is in that final scene that I don't want to give away. Mm -hmm. And then um, her incredible stunt work when she, you know, she, there were times where it was like, oh, we're going to need our stunt team to help us out here. And they, and they did. But, uh, but the, the porch scene and that scene in the bathroom, man, yeah. she kill it with wailing at that window, man, I love it. <laughs> I'm a super fan of all of them. So I'm just going to keep, you know. <laughs> no, absolutely. And not to mention, you should be a super fan of your writing as a whole. Like this was fantastic. Oh, like I love a good suspense book movie. And in that, I love a good revenge tale and something like that. Yeah. And this really uh, like this amped you up because the, I, to me, your heartbeat slowly starts going and going and going until Jack starts talking a little more and a little more and a little more. And yeah. then you just. Yeah. And, I kind of, one of my favorite parts of the movie were the fact that when she ties him up downstairs, we talk, this isn't coming out till after the movie is posted. And, oh, okay. and he yells, I have panic attacks. I was just, I was like, that is the most amazing thing because of course he's going to, because although he led the trauma, there's still trauma there. So of course he's going to have panic attacks coming from someone who suffers from them terribly. Oh, watching that oh, I was just like sympathy. yeah it came from my my husband has them and my daughter has them my daughter's autistic and she has a separate anxiety diagnosis as well and so it's like watching my loved ones go through that and and my family is very open about mental illness we talk about it a lot I, I'm a big proponent of reducing that stigma and so I thought well yeah let's like lots of people I know who don't have anything like what's going on with Jack have them so of course Jack would I love the idea of trying to ground him you know, you know, uh, Linus and I talked a lot about that, about like, how would he have justified this in his mind? What were the layers of that? And what did that do to his physicality even? So, so uh, panic attacks, but it's funny because that line, uh, I have panic attacks for real, for fucking real. Um, <laughs> my, my editor, Lana Wolverton, who is a goddamn genius, beautiful person. She, she, uh, she and I will just constantly kind of text that to each other. <laughs> 
like well, oh thank you so much for everything you did on the movie lana for real for fucking real <laughs> but i mean someone who has panic attacks who would think that oh she's gonna think i'm using this just to get out of it no and and that panic that state of oh yeah yeah you know you and you're in a basement that basement was as little as it looks in the movie that's not <sighs> camera tricks it was awful down there so yeah i think that was helpful to linus perhaps in that way he didn't so, need it he's amazing <laughs> so with this in the is there anything else coming up that we should be uh, keeping an eye out for you oh i hope so yeah i'm writing a whole bunch of things you know this film even just got um the information of this film's existence was even just released to to the public very recently so uh yeah now i'm in the process of i've written a whole bunch of scripts trying to figure out which one is the one that's going to be my baby next and finding its home so yeah but right, always yeah. in the horror genre that's my big love i do want to continue to make dark stories oh you need to because those are the best ones honestly <laughs> i tell people all the time they go you love horror i said i have a panic disorder my heart's beating the same way as everyone else is during this. And I feel normal for that moment of everyone else kind of looking around. I'm like, yeah, that's me all the time. It's cathartic in that way, isn't it? Because it does feel like, uh, it does feel like for those of us who are anxious or overthinkers or just see the darkness in the world and want to face it, it feels like a safe, healthy place. It's like you can explore all that stuff and it's okay. It's encouraged. And plus I read a synopsis for your movie Shush and I was like, well, now I have to find it because that sounds Oh yeah, amazing. it's on YouTube. If you can't it? find it, let me know. Yeah. We'll do. So I will make sure we put your social media stuff on there. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Thank um, you, Bob. Appreciate I it. hope Enjoy. this, I hope people flood to this as much as they possibly can. Getting on a service like Shutter is amazing yeah. they've been doing so much stuff and so honored. It, i like i said i did a review and an interview with um uh the people from bloody christmas definitely give it a check it's i can't wait that looks like nice my cult classic feel yeah i'm i'm excited I, I feel a little bit like uh like we're in a festival class and i and i can't wait to watch everybody else from <laughs> december shutters class you know like i watched a wounded fawn already and i loved that so oh. i'm like can't wait to keep you know they have so much great stuff on that, on that absolutely show. Well, Elson, thank you so much. I hope next time this uh, next movie comes around, I get to watch that and talk to you again. All right. Looking forward to it. Thanks, All right, Elson, Bob. thank you so much. Enjoy Happy the rest holidays. of your day. Same to you. <laughs> All right. Seriously, how can you not like this? You get Janine Garofalo in a conversation, which doesn't happen enough since probably 2000 or something. Anyway, again, that movie is The Apology. It's currently streaming on AMC+. Plus. Fantastic thriller. I got to say, um, great performance by Anna Gunn, who is a monster and just really kills this film about three and a half out of five all in all give it a watch got nothing to lose and until next time peace